the reason I got into the wrestling business. He is the greatest guy that I've ever that I've ever met, that I've ever known. Um, I only got to meet him once. It was a very quick, brief thing. Um, I didn't really get a chance to talk to him as much as I would have loved to. Um, you know, the, if I could see Owen today, the one thing that I would tell Owen is how much he meant to me because he did. He meant, I mean, his work meant a uh, tremendous uh, amount of respect uh, to me. I, I, I think that he is uh, the greatest wrestler of all time to never win a world championship. I've said that many a times, and, and I will stand by that to this day. Smith, is there anything you would like to say to Joe? Well, I appreciate Joe's words very much, and that's uh, no, no kinder tribute, uh, more significant tribute than to name your son after uh, someone that uh, is almost a role to you, such as Owen was to him, and uh, that's very touching to me. And I'm glad he brought up the Owen Hart Foundation. Uh, it's something that should have been brought up or at least before the show's out, at least, because that's, that's a very uh, legitimate thing, and uh, Owen had a passion for helping people, and his wife, uh, Martha, uh, shared that with him. And uh, that's, that's, a, that's a big thing. She, she gave a million dollars to kick that off. Oh, wow. See, I did not know that. Now, yeah, um, big deal. All right. And we are here on the Owen Hart Tribute Radio Show. And without further ado, I have the toughest man to ever wear a dress, Vito, on the line. Vito, you got to work with Owen. What are some memories of working matches with him and being on the road with him? Well, I'll tell you what is... Uh, Probably one of the most loving family men you ever want to meet. The guy had a great sense of humor, and he always liked to uh, play practical jokes on a lot of guys. Uh, him, uh, Brett, Jim Neidhart, famous for having road uh, road follies, as we call it, and uh, always a pleasure to be around. You know, one of the nicest guys in the business, and uh, probably one of his hardest working guys, and. Uh, He's probably one of the breakthrough guys. I mean, you know, having a brother like Bret Hart, I mean, coming from Stu Hart, you know, residence, and then, you know, breaking in after WWE, you know, especially being in Japan and being the Blue Blazer and doing a whole bunch of stuff like that and finally coming out and being himself. I mean, you know, tough tough shoes to fill, and then when they finally gave him his chance to shine, he finally did, and he, you know, became a very good heel. And kind of opposite of his personality, but he did a great job of what he did. Uh, I remember a time when uh, my time at the end when I wrestled in the WWF, and I was a rookie back in 1991, 92, and I was doing the TVs at the Manhattan Center, and he gave me a chance to wrestle against Owen Hart and Coco be wearing a tag team match. My tag team partner was on my shot. So going back a few years, and uh, it was pretty cool. I mean, you know, everybody back then, you know, everybody knew I was a hard-working guy, and, you know, I was uh, a young kid just, you know, doing a great job on TVs and doing seven-minute matches live. And, uh, you know, I did a few high spots, you know, uh, took the big finish from them. You know, it was always good. It was safe, nothing nothing crazy. And, uh, you know, always a smile, always a thank you. And uh, what more can you ask for? We've heard already that Owen used to take care of the young guys. Did uh, you feel that way? Oh, of course. I mean, but you know what? Owen was just didn't used to take care of the young guys. I mean, you know, he took care of everybody. He was everybody's buddy. You know, there wasn't a time when if you didn't need something or he didn't, uh, you know, want something and he had to go do something that he wouldn't uh, extend himself to help help a guy out. So, I mean, as far as just being, you know, one of the guys, you know, he helped all the guys. So, didn't matter who you are on the face of the earth, you know, he was just that type of person. Now, you touched that on a little bit. You said Owen was a uh, master ripper. Did you ever witness any ribs, or did he ever rib you? Uh, he never ribbed me, but I did witness a few. They were pretty cool. Um, I think the one that uh, probably stands out is the gravy train. That's when you take a gentleman's bag, fill it with dog food, then fill it with water, shake it up, then you got the gravy train. <laughs> so the guys, so when the guy's going to get his, uh, his gimmick and all his stuff out of his bag, you know, what does he got? Dog food all over his stuff. And to get that stink out of it, it was pretty bad. So when the guy's got to go out and work that night, and 
you know, he's got to wash his gear out and he's smelling like puppy tail, you know, best thing of all. So I have to say that would probably be the one thing I, you know, one rip I remember. Now, now, if there's one thing that you feel that Owen would want his fans to remember him for, what would that be? Uh, probably his smile, his personality, uh, just the way he cared about the business, uh, giving 110% all the time. But if you had to be remembered for anything, it would be his, you know, his uh, good nature as a human being and uh, being that kind of special person that brought happiness to everybody around and that's what Owen Hart probably want to be remembered for more than wrestling because in life, wrestling isn't everything, as we all know. Being that you weren't there at the time, it just like, it, sh- it sends shockwaves to your body to know that somebody, something like that could happen, you know, on, you know, at a, at a show, let alone, you know, having that said, I mean, the day... Eddie Guerrero passed away, and, you know, it was me and Nunzio getting ready to go to the gym, and we were in the gym, we're waiting for Benoit, waiting for Eddie, waiting for Chavo. We all used to work out together every morning, and uh, they didn't show up, and we're like, okay, what, what happened to the guys? We're the only ones here. And we get to the building, and, you know, we find out Eddie had passed away. You know, it's not a preparation, but it's definitely an eye-opener, and uh, definitely something that, Definitely sh- shakes up your world and shakes your body. Hmm. I mean, there's no way to. It's a very traumatic experience, and if anybody who's lost anybody in your family, I mean, you know what kind of dramatic experience it is, and that just doesn't go for wrestling. Wrestling is like, you know, that's your family for when you're on the road, and those are the people you're closest to, you know, when you're away from home. But you know, it doesn't replace, you know, when you are home and you lose somebody like your mother, your father. Or, your wife, your know, your kids, you know, you lose somebody like that. I mean, it's still the same devastating thing. I mean, for Bret Hart, I mean, I know Bret a long time. I mean, he, uh, I mean, he lost his brother. I mean, so I mean, to him, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, it's just tough the way around. So I mean, you know, you guys doing the tribute show, I think, is pretty nice and. Uh, you know, always take the positive out of everything, you know, and even though he's not here, his memory is still living strong, and, you know, everybody who pays uh, pays tribute to him, you know, it's very cool. It's just appreciated throughout wrestling. Was there anything inspirational that you witnessed from Owen to you? Uh, I guess being that I was, I got to work with, uh, with Brett, and then I got to be friends with Owen, and both of them used to take take me under their wing and talk to me the whole time. And you know, they were friends with me, and you know, they always used to, uh, you know, they were always cool with me. I can't, uh, I can't, I can't say anything more. Really, I mean, when they're, you know, if the business can go back to the way it used to be, and you know, they get to see a bunch of great guys, and people just don't drink. Uh, judge your book by a cover, open it up and see what the people on inside are about. Well, I'd like to thank you for doing this and uh, sharing your memories of Owen. Well, you're very welcome. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. And uh, Thank you, Big Vito. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Have a great day. Bye. 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 Another great story. Now, we do have a caller on the line. I'm going to go ahead and welcome them on to the air. Jason, you're on. Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, first, I'd like to thank uh, Missionary and JT for giving us this forum to uh, come on here with Smith, you know, one of Owen's fellow brothers, and, you know, pay our tribute to him. It really means a lot to us as fans. Um, my biggest story, I mean, I, I don't really have an, uh, an Owen memory per se, but I, I would just like to talk about what his death did, did to me as a wrestling fan. And um, I could always remember being a rabid wrestling fan and always having my guys I cheered for and guys I hated you know, ever since 1983, I've been watching wrestling. You know, I've always been a rabbit fan. I knew what I was watching was choreographed and everything. But Owen's death, uh, watching a pay-per-view that night, and consequently the following night on the tribute show, when they paid tribute to Owen, and the curtain was really raised the first time um, for us wrestling fans to see these performers for really who they are and what they are. And for every single one of them to come out there with the emotion that they showed and paying tribute to Owen and talk about Owen the way they did, it moved me 
greater than any, any, anything that's ever happened to me in my life. Um, it changed changed my perception on, on the wrestling business. Um, ever since then, I love and respect every single one of these guys. Um, Owen, uh, Owen also uh, taught me what it means to be a good father. Uh, and that time is short. Um, and never take time for granted. Um, it's just really hard. Uh, thinking back to you know, all the good good things that he did for his kids and how they just bought the first house and, and he never really got to settle into it. it it's it's just, it's heartbreaking. Um, and, and for him to die the way that he did, um, unnecessarily in a stunt, it wasn't like it was, it was an in-ring accident, you know, a, a power bomb gone wrong or a pile driver gone wrong or something. It was just something that shouldn't have, shouldn't have happened. Uh, I, I just feel he died for our entertainment, and I, I'll, I'll always have him in our heart. And, and Smith, your family is always going to be close to my heart. And uh, You touch you. grease, Jason. I love you, too. Thank you for calling in, Jay Sam. Is there anything you'd, uh, else you'd like to say, Smith, uh, before we go ahead and kick into a couple more of the interviews? Well, I'm touched by all these uh, wrestlers and uh, fans calling in. Uh, Jason, uh, you know, was obviously moved and shaken uh, by his recollections of Owen. And that reminds me of some, you know, Mark Henry was sobbing like a baby at the uh, tribute the following day. And uh, no doubt he's thinking of that, Jason, when he... Uh, just mentioning that, and I, I was touched by all the guys, the raw emotions of all these people uh, who, who loved on as a, as a co-worker and a fellow wrestler and a fellow uh, human. They weren't family, but they were they were they were deeply saddened. And I know all all the hierarchy of the WWE was as well. I know Owen uh, took pride in. You know, doing a lot of charity work for Linda McMahon, and he'd never balk at signing autographs. Uh, whether it was one kid on a street in Calgary or sitting all day at a you know a venue uh, you know, or a mall or something for for a charitable thing, he was devoted to the business, devoted to his family, devoted to his fellow wrestlers. He was a perfectionist and uh, you know very serious entertainer. He could have been a movie star, I think. You know, he's he he, uh, he had great. Uh, you know, credibility as an actor. I mean, he was a great athlete. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here on the Owen Hart Tribute Radio Show, and at this time, I have ECW original Pitbull number one, Gary Wolf. Gary, I know you got to work with Owen in Japan, as well as other places. What was your experience working with Owen? Well, Owen was actually a pretty good friend of mine. Uh, I broke into business. Uh, me and my partner were friends with a lot of guys that came out of the uh, the dungeon, and uh, Benoit being one of them, Owen being another one, uh, Jericho being another one, uh, I think Lance was another one. Uh, so we, what happened was I didn't really know Owen at first until I found out, until Tokyo Joe, who was his agent, became my agent. And he flew in from Canada and uh, into Philadelphia and gave us a contract for uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. And that's when the first time I went to Japan was with Owen. And uh, it was pretty good. I mean, it was, it was thank God for Owen because if Owen wasn't there, I didn't know what I was going to do because it was the first time that we were ever in Tokyo. And, uh, you know, the, the you know, being in Tokyo for the first time and then having, you know, you know, they didn't know what to do as far as ordering food or, or or other things, you know. So Owen, like, more or less showed us, you know, how to order food and, you know, do stuff like that. And and I also remembered him, uh, he's, he's always put his family first. I mean, no matter what, no matter what it was, I don't care if he had a, two nickels in his pocket, he made sure money went home to his family. And now, and and then he would, and sometimes he wouldn't even eat out with us. He would have his, uh, you know, little little grill with him, and he would set it up in his room, and you know, he would cook his own food just to save money, just so he could send money to his family. And uh, that's the kind of person Owen was. I mean, he just, wanted, I mean, he, he he I can't. I'm not saying he was cheap. He was just very good with his money. Like he didn't want to waste his money because he 